Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's take a look outside our weather window on this Wednesday and lots of low clouds. That's ahead of a storm system moving our way. Temperature wise, it was a fairly mild day out there today. Didn't feel too bad. A little bit of sunshine at times today, but as I mentioned, storm moving in on us and we have a winter weather advisory that will go into effect that will be from 1 a.m. overnight until noon tomorrow those areas shaded in purple yeah we could see about one to three inches maybe two to four inches of snow as we wake up tomorrow morning before all of this turns over to rain and that is a big chunk of our ncw life viewing area so we'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on and now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. A fire at the Grant County landfill near Afreda kept crews busy this morning. Attorneys for a Wenatchee religious leader charged with domestic abuse say some of the criminal counts against him should be thrown out. And the city of Wenatchee will host a public hearing on Thursday on the proposed Confluence Parkway project. But first, our top story tonight, two North Central Washington Republicans played ceremonial roles at yesterday's State of the State address by Governor Jay Inslee. In the first in-person legislative session since the pandemic began, 13th District Republican Senator Judy Warnick sat in the rostrum and 12th District Senator Brad Hawkins escorted statewide elected officers into the Capitol chamber in Olympia. In his speech, Inslee asked the state's lawmakers to take bold action on housing, homeless assistance, gun control, and reproductive rights. It is because of the work we do in these chambers, and because of that work, and because of the work of millions of Washingtonians, I can proudly report to you this. The state of our state is strong, and I am happy If we continue building on the investments and policies we've started, we can continue building in Washington where everyone is housed, where our schools are safe from gun violence and students receive the mental and educational support they need, where the existential crisis of climate change is met by unmatched innovation, where communities are welcoming and safe for all, where all people have a constitutional right to reproductive freedom, and where people struggling with mental health or substance use no longer fall unseen and unheard through the cracks. A fire at the Grant County landfill near Afreda kept crews busy this morning. Sheriff's deputies said some smoke was visible at the landfill off Neva Road, uh, Lake Road, south of Afreda. Efforts to extinguish the fire involved excavating the landfill to get at that source. Deputies said the fire posed no immediate threat to the public. While well, attorneys for a Wenatchee religious leader charged with domestic abuse say some of the criminal counts against him should be thrown out. Lawyers for Isaac David Heckman of the Assembly of Called Out Believers filed motions to dismiss charges of cyber stalking and witness tampering before he goes to trial coming up in March. Heckman was initially charged with three counts of assault after his arrest in 2021. Chelan County deputies say Heckman then went on to harass his alleged victim using a website that posted sensitive images of her. His defense attorney says the facts are insufficient to support those charges. If a judge won't dismiss, dismiss them, Heckman wants them severed from his domestic violence case and heard in a separate trial. Well, the city of Wenatchee will host a public hearing tomorrow on the proposed Confluence Parkway project. That major road realignment would create a second bridge across the Wenatchee River in the north of the city and make way for an estimated 40,000 to 60,000 more vehicles to cross every day. An environmental assessment has now been completed and made available on the city's website. Members of the public can comment on the environmental review until January 31st. The Thursday hearing starts at 5.15 p.m. before the City Council at Wenatchee City Hall. 
When we come back, wildlife agents will be catching local bighorn sheep from the skies this winter. The North Central Washington Equity Alliance will continue their learning to people better together. That's a learning series this year. We'll tell you more about that. And a Chelan County Sheriff K-9 is in need of community help. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Welcome back. In another news, wildlife agents will be catching local bighorn sheep from the skies this winter. The State Department of Fish and Wildlife says it will be carrying out aerial captures through March on the Manson Nad Lake Chelan herds, as well as other herds throughout the east side of the state. The sheep will be fitted with radio collars and then released. After that, they'll be monitored over the next four years to gain data on their range habits and survival patterns. The North Central Washington Equity Alliance will continue their Learning to People Better Together learning series this year. The program is spread out in 10 sessions and is designed for participants from North Central Washington organizations to develop skills in diversity, equity, and inclusion. The majority of the sessions will be held virtually in the evenings and will be limited to 30 people total. The series will begin with a hybrid evening session on January 25th at the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. Learning to People Better Together launched in 2021 and worked with leaders from 25 different North Central Washington nonprofits. A Chelan County Sheriff K-9 is in need of community help. K-9 ASA has been working with the Sheriff's Office since 2017, but began experiencing health issues in July of 2021. ASA suffered a cruciate ligament tear in her left leg and underwent surgery at Washington State University. The staff at WSU advised that the injury was caused by a genetic condition and ASA had a 50% chance of the same injury occurring in her right leg. Well, last September, that happened. After trying treatment and physical therapy with Kashmir Vet Clinic, another surgery was recommended by the WSU Vet Hospital. The Sheriff's Office posted to Facebook asking, asking for donations for her surgery and potential future treatments. Once recovered from surgery, ASA is expected to return to duty. A link to donate can be found on our NCW Life website. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Join NCW Life Channel for live coverage of the Apple Blossom Royalty Selection Pageant presented by Cashmere Valley Bank on Saturday, February 11th. The countdown to coronation at 6 and the pageant at 7 o'clock. Coverage is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Harvest Valley Pest Control, and the Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center. Join us for the Apple Blossom Festival Royalty Selection Pageant on the NCW Life Channel. 
Working with August Edge Real Estate, both sellers and buyers feel confident knowing they are in the hands of award-winning professionals. August Edge offers a 2% listing commission, which includes above standard service and technology. We offer high-tech 3D imagery, drone photos, local North Central Washington TV ads, and impressive smart flyer installed at your listing. The August Edge website also hosts your home with an interactive featured listing page. August Edge is professional, personable, and preferable. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, the 104th Washington State Apple Blossom Festival got underway this week as the field of 33 young ladies from the Eastmont and Wenatchee School District was narrowed down to the top 10. The announcement was made live on the NCW Life Channel last night at the Wenatchee Convention Center by Alex Haley and Christine Jar. Congratulations, Natalie Pearson. Congratulations, candidate Rachel Hamilton! Congratulations, Sophia Kinninger! Congratulations, Kendall Flanagan! Congratulations, candidate Scarlett Cron! Congratulations, candidate Hania Hernandez Mendoza! Congratulations, candidate Taylor Williams! Congratulations, candidate Alicia Bartlett! Congratulations, candidate Finley Otley. Congratulations, candidate Dylan Schmidt. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 top 10 candidates for the 104th Washington State Apple Blossom Festival. By the way, the royalty selection pageant presented by Cashmere Valley Bank is Saturday, February 11th, right here on the NCW Life Channel with the countdown to coronation at 6 and the pageant to follow at 7. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great Wednesday today. We actually about 1 to 2 o'clock saw a peak at the sun out there. But boy, once again, a lot of those low clouds. And we did see plenty of that. Temperatures weren't too bad as we look down at the Wenatchee Valley from our SkyFi tower camera up on Wenatchee Heights. Once again, just like yesterday, 36, our unofficial high temperature today. We went up a click in our normal high. We're up to 33. 
53 is our normal now. 53, our record high. That was set back in 2014. This morning, another mild one, 32 degrees, and that's well above our normal low, which is 24 for this time of year. Record one below, and that was set in 1974. Sunrise this morning, 746, and the sun set at 432. Let's take a look at what we can expect as we get you into your Thursday forecast. Temperatures continuing to slowly creep up. Moses Lake was about 40 today, 41 for a high for tomorrow, 40 in Afreda, 39 the high temperature in Quincy, 37 so nice from Wenatchee up through Chelan, and then a little bit cooler in our upper elevations, 35 for Leavenworth tomorrow, and 32 if you're heading up to Lake Wenatchee. Taking a look at what we can expect, yeah, here is our storm system. Here we are right here. The storm system will move through tonight, and then there is our next storm as it moves in Saturday, and that will bring us a little bit of precip on Saturday and Sunday. Here's the satellite view of these storm systems. This is the one that will begin probably around midnight tonight, bringing a lot of moisture, and here is the moisture field associated with that. Boy, headed right for California once again. And then there's that weekend storm. It looks like that could be diminishing somewhat as we get there. We'll talk more about that in a second, but here's the edge of that giant storm ready to move in on us tonight. We could see snow, a winter weather advisory in place, one to three inches of snow possible by tomorrow. Low temperatures consistently, as we've seen, pretty much in the lower 30s. For your Thursday, this is your morning commute tomorrow. Morning snow, and that will turn over to uh, rain in the afternoon. This is even in the evening time, so we are still going to see showers throughout the day tomorrow with high temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. For Friday, morning rain showers, and then it will stop in the afternoon. Just cloudy skies, I think, in the evening hours for Friday. It's going to be nice, though. High temperatures near that 40 degree mark, maybe even a little warmer than that down in the Tri Cities, mid 40s to upper 40s. For Saturday, maybe a morning shower. It will stay mild. As as we kick off our upcoming weekend. Highs again near that 40 degree mark, so a nice start to our weekend. By Sunday, cloudy skies, a double shot of low pressure will bring some clouds our direction, so about a 50% chance of rain. Some snow showers back along Snoqualmie and Stevens Passes on Sunday. High temperatures in the upper 30s to end our weekend. Kicking off Martin Luther King Day on Monday. Many of you will have the day off. No school on Monday. We're going to stay fairly dry for Monday, partly cloudy, a little bit cooler though with high temperatures in the mid 30s for Monday and we'll stay that way for Tuesday as our next round a big flow of westerly air comes in and that will bring showers throughout Washington state, rain and snow likely highs on Tuesday in the mid to upper 30s. Let's take a look now at that seven day forecast brought to you by Apple Valley Honda and tonight we will drop down once again a very mild low temperature of 32 degrees. Talk about mild lows as we begin to warm up. We'll see a good chance for morning snow, evening rain on Thursday and 37. Morning rain showers for both Friday and Saturday. 40 your high Friday and 39 on Saturday. A pretty decent day for Sunday too. A 50-50 chance for rain and 39 degrees. And we'll see kind of a break, literally a break between storms on Monday. 36 with partly cloudy skies. And then for Tuesday Day, back to the wet stuff. Cloudy conditions, rain and snow likely with a high then of 37. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. NCW Live Channel is your home for local sports with the Wenatchee Panthers at East Bont Wildcats right here. Coverage brought to you by Abbey's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mark, and Together for You. Follow all the action right here on the NCW Life Channel. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. 
D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. Make that six in a row for the Seattle Kraken as they downed Buffalo on the road last night by a final of four to three. Seattle fell behind early, but Jordan Eberle helped turn the tide with a goal in the first to help the Kraken stay unbeaten on their current road trip. They were one for six last night in Montreal on the power play. Four for their last 14. And they get one right there with a shot from the point deflected in front of the net. And tie the game at one. Jordan Eberle standing in front. He's going to get his 10th of the year here. Power play here. Might have been pointing to the screen in front. See, Skinner would have been the guy there, but I don't think he touches this. He's the one that made the play back to Darlene. There's a shot coming through, and I think just even that stick. Watch Skinner just kind of swipe at it with a stick there, and it kind of threw Grubauer off a little bit. Back to Schultz on the right side. Down the boards with it. Trying to cut to the net. Scores! Yanni Gord goes to the net. Off the rush on the wing, and it's a tie game at 2-2 with 11-1 remaining in the second period. Morgan first to it. Here comes a double team. Skinner, it's off of him for Tuck in front. And that's stopped by Grubauer. Tuck again with a shot, and that one goes to the corner. Takes the pass at center. Burakovsky working on Owen Power. Up top for Dunn with a shot. It's off the post. Rebound, they score. The initial shot went off the post, but standing right at the side of the goal. The tap in his air. Maddie Beneers. Maddie Beneers, who keeps his goal streak going, takes care of the far corner and then sends it back to the line. Alexiak down low, touched by Everly. In front, scores! One timer from Justin Schultz. And it's a 4 2 Seattle lead. Down the wing, Casey Middlestat plays it inside. Oh, Grubauer pushes over to make the save. Before 5 17 had expired, that shot goes wide. Thompson. Back to Darlene, slapper, rebound, scores! Went off his stick with seven seconds down to the corner. Larson's just going to eat this in the corner with three seconds. Sabres can't keep it in the zone. Game will end 4-3, Seattle. Philip Grubauer got the rare start in net and helped preserve the victory. Coach Dave Haxtell says the penalty kill also a key for the Kraken last night. I felt like we had, we had to get through the first one. And, and like I say, I mean, you got to have guys make plays. Right, that's really, you know, the PK is, yeah, there's structure and there's hard work and there's everything else. We have to have guys make plays. Lars made a play on, on that rebound uh, that went off the post and went, you know, right out to the slot. He made a play, he blocked a shot. Ruby made a play, he made a, he made a good save. That got us through that first one. And, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> we, we made a mistake uh, on, on the goal that we gave up. We didn't get out and get pressure to it. Um, but we had the confidence, you know, late in the third period to go out and get a great kill. So, you know, those are those are really good, you know, building blocks that, uh, you know, we continue to see coming into place. Seattle remains on the road at Boston tomorrow, a 4 o'clock game on Root Sports Northwest. Wenatchee Wild return to home ice tonight against the Salmon Arm Silverbacks. Wenatchee's coming off a 2-1 and one road trip north of the border. And the broadcast voice of the Wild, Austin Drada, says this could be a crucial week for the Wild. This group has been trying to get back to 500. They've had that goal for... Uh, a uh, couple of months now, they wanted to do it by Christmas, got close a couple of times, weren't able to uh, to come all the way back and win that last one to get back to 500. Got a chance to do it on Wednesday night, though, so uh, if they're able to come away with a, uh, a win or two this week and be able to build on that momentum, maybe this is a week we look back and say, hey, it's another turning point in the season. Drade joined Dan on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley this morning to preview the coming games, including Salmon Arm tonight and Prince George on Saturday. Salmon Arm uh, right in the middle of the pack here in the, uh, in the Interior Conference. Uh, played a couple of tough games this past week against uh, Vernon, if I remember correctly. Uh, they're, uh, they're a solid group. They'll, uh, they'll uh, throw the bodies around and uh, throw pucks toward the net. Gave these guys a good run on, uh, uh, back in November at the end of a nice long winning streak there. Uh, Prince George, just saw them a couple of weeks ago. They play heavy. They play physical. They'll, uh, they'll keep coming at you. They did not quit against us a couple of weeks ago. And, I, uh, I don't expect them to quit against us on Saturday either. 
Well, Nancy drops the puck against Salmon Arm tonight at 6.05. They'll travel to Cranbrook Friday at 7, then return home Saturday at 6.05 to host Prince George. If you want tickets, go to WenatcheeWildHockey.com for more. They played three more basketball games at the Town Toyota Center last night before removing the court to reveal the ice for tonight's wild hockey game. Uh, following a spirited game between Eastmont and Wenatchee's unified squads, the Wildcat girls defeated the Panthers 62-21. Eastmont boys were also victorious over Wenatchee 56. 7 to 45. Other girls basketball last night. Bridgeport beat Manson 54-41. It was Oroville over Liberty Bell 32-21. Lake Roosevelt outlasted Tenasket 58-52. Okanagan beat Brewster 62-37. Grandview edged Euphrates 56-52. On the boys' courts last night, OMAC down Cascade 59-42. Lake Roosevelt whipped Tenasket 84-44. Brewster beat Okanagan 69-51. Manson top Bridgeport 52-44. Liberty Bell over Oroville. Grandview beat Euphrates by 10. The Prep schedule for today. Well, a couple of games happening. Cashmere visits Quincy. Girls are on tap coming up at 545. The boys will follow at 715. Well, how about the Wenatchee uh, girls bowling team? Not undefeated anymore. Eastmont put the smackdown on Wenatchee at Eastmont Lanes yesterday. Four zip. Wildcats finished with 1,926 pins to Wenatchee's 1,796. High bowlers for Eastmont were Grace Hensley with a 175 and 184, and Jillian Castle with a 167 and 169. Ava Porter and Charlene Campbell were high rollers for Wenatchee, but uh, not enough last night. As the Seahawks prepare for their playoff game with C San Francisco Saturday, they know they'll have an uphill climb. After all, the 49ers have won 10 straight, claimed the NFC West Championship. Coach Pete Carroll says the Seattle's looking forward to this challenge. Well, it's exciting to be going here and still playing football, and our guys are uh, really tuned into it, um, as they should be, and we all deserve to be. Uh, it's a terrific matchup. You know, you played a team that's this good and, and in your division and with this much familiarity. Um, this is really a, a chess, chess match in a lot of ways for the coaches. Um, it's just ball for the players. Uh, but... Uh, a lot of respect for who we're playing and how they've done in their season and the guys they have on their team and and uh, what they've accomplished. It's it's a uh, you know being division champs is a big deal around here. Oh yeah, it's time for me to talk again. <laughs> Rookie replacement quarterback Brock Purdy has led San Francisco to five of those ten wins in a row. Carroll says it's no fluke. He's capable. It's not too big for him. You know, it's he is, it doesn't seem like he's got the, the the rookie learning curve to deal with. You know, and. and uh, he obviously is get, getting coached really well, but he's taken to it, and he's he's utilizing the guys around him. I mean, he's got a terrific cast around him. Um, he's he's playing that point guard position really to a great extent. That it's it's all part of why he's been successful. He's got great guys around him, but he's doing it. You know, he's still getting it done. Seahawks and Niners kick off the Super Wild Card Weekend at 1:30 in the afternoon Saturday on Fox. Let's look at sports news. Grant, back to you. Right. Structured virtual learning has its advantages. Online students with the Wenatchee Internet Academy got a chance on Tuesday to interact with Antarctic field biologist Jean Pennycook and her flock of neighborhood Adelie penguins, which was almost 10,000 miles south of Wenatchee. Penny Cook explored the penguins' lifestyle and habitat live on Zoom for the WIA students, led by teacher Tina Nickpin Brown. One of the curious penguins got up close and personal with Penny Cook's camera. The scientist is on site studying a colony of 2,500 penguin nests in below zero temperatures. Now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan. Thank you very much, Grant. On the next edition of Wake Up on Anchi Valley, Alan Walker from the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council and your good friend, Jeremy. And we're going to talk about empty bowls and other cool things, Alan. Yes, we are. It's a pleasure to be here. Empty Bowls is back. You can participate in it. We encourage you to participate in it. The Chelan Douglas Community Action Council will be my guest on the next edition of Wake Up on Anchi Valley. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan. And that'll do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.
Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up Anachi Valley. It's Wake Up Anachi Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel.